How does PTSD affect brain function? PTSD does affect the brain, and there are a lot of us in the field who want to say to insurers and to the Pentagon when they give medals for injury on the job, PTSD is an injury. And we're starting to find brain evidence of that injury. Now, it doesn't mean that you're brain damaged and you can't recover. It does mean that parts of the brain that can be visualized on MRIs, PET scans, and something relatively new called the MEG, magnetoencephalogram, are showing remarkable changes from PTSD. Let me start with the MEG. I'm very excited about this, and I, I've met with Brian Engdahl and Apostolos Georgiopoulos, who, along with other colleagues, have developed a whole new technology for looking at people with PTSD. And I had my brain examined, so to speak, uh, along with um, a journalist colleague of mine. We, we went to the program at the VA. It's a wonderful program, and here's what they're finding. <clears throat> In the right temporal lobe, which is right near the right ear, there appears to be a measurable difference in people with PTSD. It's early. It's exciting new research. It suggests that something is going on there in the gray matter, the thinking part of the brain, that's a little bit like epilepsy. Like epilepsy. There's not literally a scar, but there is a change in the electrical discharge of the brain cells in that part of the brain. And it's there whether you're having a flashback or not. But it appears to be what is responsible for people with PTSD being vulnerable to having flashbacks. And when you think about it, the right brain has a lot more to do with the color and the sense, the sensation, the smell, the texture of memory, and the left brain has more to do with knowing that you're having a memory, placing it in the past, and, and having it have shape, uh, like the outlines of a drawing. So I think of the outlines of a bad experience being primarily coming from our left brain, and the, the verve, the, the patterns, the stuff that haunts us, that has bright lights or bad smells coming more from the right brain. PTSD you can think of as a condition that is fundamentally one of being led by the worst part of your trauma memory, and you can't control it. Well, I believe that Apostolos Georgiopoulos and his team are on to the brain anatomy, the, the wiring of the PTSD brain. So that's, that's a way in which the brain is affected and is different. Now, there are other differences that we've known about for a long time in people who've been hurt and who have a heightened sense of anxiety. There are, there are parts of the brain that prepare us for danger and that appear to be more volatile, if you will, because we've been endangered. Uh, there's a part of the limbic system, which is the feeling part of the brain, and there are fear centers, and these fear centers seem to be more active in people who've been traumatized. There's the front part of the mind, the frontal lobes, and they seem to dampen down the fear centers and there are some people whose PTSD pattern shows less activation of the front part of the brain. But that's true of a lot of other states as well. There, there's some very exciting new work that shows that there may be two types of PTSD. There are those of us who are very aroused and who are more prone to flashbacks. And there is another group, slightly smaller, who are, if you will, spaced out. They're numb 
And the technical word is they have dissociation. In lay language, they go into a trance-like state. They feel like they're living in a dream. They, they sometimes feel they're up above the scene rather than in the scene. And in a way, this protects them from feeling all of the anxiety that the other pattern feels. But there are people who have all of this at once. And PTSD, by definition, is having memories you don't want to have, maybe generated from a spot in the right brain that the Minnesota team has discovered. And it also includes being numb and avoidant. And it also includes having a lower threshold for being made very anxious. And all of that is showing up now in the brain patterns where we would expect to find it. There are people who are a lot better than I am at understanding and explaining parts of the brain that are changed in PTSD. But let me tell you what I know and what I find useful and what I try to explain to others. One part is called the hippocampus. And we have two of these in, on either side of the brain. And it, this is a small anatomical structure. And it's believed to play a role in organizing memory and in moving memories into feelings and actions. And those people who have a smaller hippocampus seem to be more vulnerable to PTSD. There were studies done comparing hippocampal size with getting PTSD or not getting PTSD after you were traumatized. So we, we looked at a bunch of, um, of combat soldiers who all were exposed to trauma. And those who got PTSD tended to have a relatively smaller hippocampal volume than those who were similarly exposed to trauma, but who didn't get PTSD. And, and then we looked at the twin brothers who weren't sent to war. And sure enough, those twins had the same size hippocampus. And, and what that proved was you had a smaller hippocampus going into trauma, and that gave you a greater risk for PTSD. It, it showed that it wasn't that your, the volume of your hippocampus shrunk because you were exposed to trauma or because you got PTSD. That's one study. Now, a different study was done on another part of the brain called the anterior cingulate gyrus. And I think of this, it's, it's gray matter in the brain, and I think of this as being like the highway that connects the emotional part of the brain, the limbic system that's dealing with feelings, and the gray matter of the brain that's dealing with thought, the cortex. And in that case, after getting PTSD and after being traumatized, there was some reduction in the number of cells in this pathway. So this looks like a res result, a brain damaging result of PTSD, that particular part of the brain. We don't know for sure about the right temporal lobe. I'm going to call this the Georgiopolis spot. We don't know for sure whether that was there to begin with or whether that was caused by trauma and then results in a certain part of the PTSD pattern. My suspicion is it was caused by the trauma. There also is this change in frontal lobe function. And I think the jury is out on that as to whether that is somewhat more vulnerable to begin with or whether that's caused by trauma. I tend to think it's caused by trauma. I also think that it comes back, that frontal lobe function can be restored. So those are some of the parts of the brain that are, oh, and another important part of the brain that's clearly affected is called the amygdala. Think of that as a fear center. It's, it's called a midbrain structure. It's part of the brain that we share with reptiles. It's uh, crocodiles 
have an amygdala, and reptiles can have a fear response that's very similar to human fear response. Uh, I don't know if the amygdala is damaged or is just affected so that it behaves in a different way. And, and there's a lot of fundamental research going on on these brain parts. I, I, I think for somebody who has PTSD and want, wants to know, am I brain damaged? I would say your brain is affected. You've been injured and there's going to be a recovery period. And science is now trying to learn more about medication that helps and non-medication devices that help and to learn more about just how quickly the brain recovers just as your kidney would recover from a kidney disease or from an injury to a kidney.